Well, hello, folks out there on YouTube land. Got a really big show for you. All right, folks, the Vols are fighting back, and Donde Plowman uh, rips the NCAA as being morally wrong, and she said a bunch of other stuff, too, in a letter. I'm going to tell you right now, this is getting ready to get hot, very hot. I am sick and tired of the NCAA and their leaks out to their little purveyors of negativity that they've accidentally somehow got information from the NCAA and knew an investigation might be going on or might be alleged. I wonder how that information got out. I wonder if the NCAA has some people over there leaking a few things. Hmm. Makes you wonder, how could these uh, Dennis Dodd and, uh, and Pat Forday get this information? I'll tell you why, because there's professional leakers at the NCAA, but they don't actually uh, comment on investigations. Yeah, they just leak out whatever they want. That's what they do. And this is a story by Adam Sparks of the Knoxville News Sentinel. He does a great job, by the way. Very good journalist. It says, uh, Donde Plowman slams M NCAA is morally wrong over NIL investigation. Email shows. She said the NCAA is wrong for alleging that UT broke any rules involving name, image, and likeness. Wrong, 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 wrong. According to an email she sent to NCAA President Charlie Baker, Knox News obtained that email, which was sent Monday, through a public records request. Plowman chides the NCAA continually changing approach to NIL and its intent to enforce NIL rules retroactively, which we talked about in an earlier video. They want to go back in time and they want to hold you to rules that they set up later, which is absurd. So the implications of the NCAA staff approach to date goes beyond just our institution, but also could harm many more student athletes who have done nothing wrong, all based on the administrative's disputes of adults. This is morally wrong and undermines the credibility of the NCAA stated interest in acting in the best interest of student athletes. I'm going to tell you where she's going with this. She's setting this up for a lawsuit if necessary. You can tell by that verbiage. That's exactly what she's talking about. And she knows that the court system likes the student athletes. It says UT could face multiple level one or level two violations. A source with direct knowledge of the situation told Knox News. Plowman also referenced the possibility UT could face a charge of lack of institutional control. UT staff met with members of the NCAA enforcement staff Monday to discuss allegations that they were going to bring against the university related to NIL, but Plowman denied that any violations occurred. She said, we appreciate your staff listening to our arguments and agreeing to evaluate them. The NCAA's allegations are factually untrue and procedurally flawed. Moreover, it is intellectually dishonest for the NCAA enforcement staff to pursue infractions cases as if student athletes have no NIL rights. UT confirmed the existence of the investigation, but it has not received a notice of allegations. No specific athletes have been surfaced in the probe, a source with direct knowledge told Knox News. The NCAA declined comment in a statement to Knox News because they're too busy leaking out information. If you want to find out, you better talk to Dennis Dodd or uh, Pat Forday. It says, with rare exceptions, the NCAA does not comment on... <laughs> yeah, they don't comment, all right. No, no, they just leak out whatever they want. Isn't that cute? They're so professional that way. Spire Sports Group, an NIL collective based in Knoxville, has signed more than 200 UT athletes across 11 sports. It says, Plowman noted in her letter to Barker that the NCAA had refused to meet with her and athletic director Danny White in December to discuss the allegations. It would have been my preference to discuss my concerns with you in person. It said, your recent testimony before Congress indicated that's exactly what you wanted. You wanted to meet with member institutions and student athletes. But when she offered to meet, nah, we don't want to. So in other words, you were just platitudes. Platitudes. That's all that is. Horse crap. She says, I'm sharing my perspective in writing since my December request for you to meet with me and our athletic director, Danny White, was denied. So why did you tell Congress you wanted to uh, hear back from these institutions, and then you denied it. It's almost like you're full of crap. Liar! Additional rules violations would put UT in precarious position because the NCAA handed down back with Jeremy Pruitt. NCAA praised UT for its exemplary cooperation during that investigation, in fact, that Plowman mentioned it in her impassioned email. She said it is inconceivable that our institutional leadership would be cited as an example of exemplary leadership in July 2023. Then as a cautionary example of lack of institutional control, six months later, you sit on a throne of lies. Because it's absurd. It's absurd. UT avoided a charge of lack of institutional control because of their cooperation. 
said it's been difficult to pin down NCAA rules regulating NIL because they've changed so much. She said the NCAA first allowed athletes to receive NIL benefits on July 1st of 2021. The policy decision effective date were announced hours before because they had to. They were getting ready to pass law, so they had to. They didn't want to. That's the last thing they wanted to do. They don't give a crap about those kids. Since then, NCAA policies and state laws related to NIL have changed constantly, making enforcement a challenge because it, it's impossible. Plowman took issue with the NCAA's approach in her email to Baker. Said the leaders of intercollegiate athletics owe it to student athletes and their families to establish clear rules and to act in their best interest. Instead, two and a half years of vague, contradictory NCAA memos, emails, and guidance about name, image, and likeness has created extraordinary chaos that student athletes and institutions are struggling to navigate. In short, the NCAA is failing. That is why you fail. And here they're talking about can the NCAA enforce rules before they even existed. What could be in question is whether UT violated rules before they were actually enacted. It says in May of 2022, the NCAA reinforced to member schools that using NIL as recruiting inducements violated its rules. At the time, the NCAA amended its policy with plans to retroactively investigate improper behavior. So they're going to get you for rules they did later. So the speed limit was a certain thing, and then a year later they changed the speed limit. Oh, but you were going 45 and a 35 that we made 35 a year later. You can't make this crap up. It says, regrettably, in this chaotic environment, the NCAA enforcement staff is trying to retroactively apply unclear guidance to punish and make an example of institution and others. Plowman said UT complied with interim NIL policy and guidance as it was put in place by the NCAA. No member institution could follow future guidance prior to it being given, let alone interpreted. You, you, it's just ridiculous. They want you to know what's in their head. They want you to know what the rules are going to be before they've even set them. Plowman further said no UT employee has been named or committed NIL violations and neither an NIL collective nor any athlete broke NCAA rules as they existed at the time any actions were taken. She added that some of the allegations are simply factually untrue. There's no reason to panic. Now it is true that one of the crew members is ill, but the other two pilots are just fine. They're at the controls flying the plane. So Plowman just, look, she just let them have it. This could end up in a lawsuit and the NCAA could lose what little bit of teeth they got left. And I've been wondering when this was going to happen, when some institution was not going to take their crap anymore, while they make these changes and then go back in time and go, oh, well, you should have known we were going to do this. You should have just assumed that, in other words, you shouldn't even use NIL because we don't want NIL in the first place. We only allow it because we had no choice. The courts made us. We're the NCAA. We want to be in charge. We don't want the courts telling us what to do. That's what it boils down to. And so they're looking for a uh, sacrificial lamb. Well, UT's not going to be one. I'll just go ahead and tell you, Plowman knows what she's talking about, and so does Danny White. And if they want to come at us, bring it on. Bring it on. Oh, it's already been brought We will take the NCAA down because it's only a matter of time for an institution does. They're trying to do things that courts have ruled against them. They're doing things that states have ruled against them. They're not the law. They think they're the law. The law is the law. And they've got to work around that. And they're trying to be omnipotent. Well, they're not. You do not control the world. So you want to come in here and mess with UT? Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. You mess with the bull, you're going to get the horns. And Plowman's going to make sure you do. If you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's be able to continue to cover my vols and all this nonsense. If you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Hit that little button. You'll get all my videos on this stuff. And right over here is most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk J. I got to watch my balls against South Carolina and I'm missing the game. Dadgum NCAA.